Edi a touch. Edi a finish. He's only really been playing basketball about five or six years. Played more baseball and hockey growing up as a kid in Toronto. Zach's always been really tall. He was a big baby, quite frankly. And so he's always been a big kid and used to being taller than everybody else. He'd always really resisted basketball. It was just kind of, I think, a little predictable for him. For years, Zach would have umpires and coaches tell him, you should play basketball because it was such a novel idea, a tall guy, you know, playing basketball. So sometimes it was frustrating to him because he would say, I play hockey, you know, I play baseball. I really didn't like people telling me what I should do, what sports I should play. So I think I almost like took the opposite route. You want me to do this, so I'm just not going to do it. I'm not even going to touch a basketball. 11 years old or so, he started getting very serious about baseball. He could occasionally throw an 80-mile fastball. He, at one point, said, you know, I want to be the tallest MLB pitcher out there. And I was thinking, yeah, you could probably do that. Unfortunately, I almost outgrew the sport a little bit. I uh, had some shoulder problems. In the winter, I was going to play some basketball to kind of keep cross-training, keep it active. I started playing halfway through my 10th grade year, and then the next year I was at IMG and really, really trying to pursue basketball. IMG is a whole nother universe. His dad and I talked about it because it was a big decision. He was going to be leaving home. It was a sport that he just started. I remember Zach saying to me, you know, I think prep school is going to be what I need to do in order to get where I want to be. There's definitely some points where I was feeling like, whoa, what am I doing here? I just started playing the sport less than a year ago, and now I'm in America pursuing it. I'm just trying to get my good understanding of the game and wait for the game to kind of slow down for me. And eventually it did. It gave him a real hunger. He was driven to try to learn everything, so he was an absolute sponge. That next year, I was really doing well during my summer. And that's where I picked up offers from Purdue, Baylor, Seton Hall. All three of his schools were really ones I was comfortable with him going to. He called me up and he said, OK, I'm ready to you know, tell them my letter of intent, and it's going to be Purdue. Hunter Dickinson was a national recruit. He was a guy that we were going after. He goes to Michigan when we get Zach. So he says, okay, well, we're getting a guy with better size. If you look at it now, probably the greatest consolation prize, you know, ever in Purdue basketball history. You could see it coming, but you still didn't know when. And I just, when we took him, like, I, I thought he was going to be a good player. I just didn't know when he was going to be a good player. Oh, come on! I know for a fact the other seven-footers we have, they couldn't pitch, first of all. When I saw that YouTube video and uh, with the way his body bends, we've had enough big guys to where you're just like, those guys' bodies, they don't move like that. They don't bend like that. That's what jumped out. First time I met him. His mom had literally just drove him down, so he like got straight out of the van and came and played pickup. We were all sort of like, we'll see. He was just so raw. If I had a video of that day compared to where he is now, that speaks to like just his rapid improvement. You can motivate Zach. I'll say something to him before a game just to kind of rattle his cage, and he'll get going. Coach B always says, whoever we're playing, he'll be like, oh, he sent you flowers today. <laughs> so it's just little stuff like that. I definitely play better when I'm bothered because I think I'm, I'm more focused on playing for something. People have sort of always doubted him. People were just like, oh, he's just tall. And I think he, this year especially, was really motivated by that to sort of prove people wrong. I think it's a very ignorant take. It's like saying LeBron's only good because he's athletic. I'll see it, I'll kind of laugh at it. Like our team will really, they'll get on me too. Like, oh, he's just tall, blah, 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 blah. They'll say it just as much as uh, I hear from other people. Because they know it kind of motivates me, you know, it kind of gets under my skin. 
He actually has a, a tattoo that says Hakuna Matata, and he likes it because he says there is no problems, and that's really embodies a lot of Zach. Hakuna Matata has been my mantra for a while. I'm someone that kind of overthinks a lot of things, so kind of having this on my wrist to remind me, like, don't stress about it. Look at where you are now, where you might have thought you were going to be, and just uh, be glad that you're in the position that you are now. Up top, Edie collects and throws it down. It would have to be a little bit beyond what I expected. Like, he'd be the National Player of the Year right now. He averaged three a senior in high school. He's obviously different. There's not a lot of guys like him out there. I think each and every night, every practice, every workout, he wants to go out and really show people what they couldn't see and what they missed out on. I'm just glad that consolation prize fell into our laps. I was lucky enough to retire just before Zach started at Purdue. Part of it was, I said, I'm not missing a minute of this. Toronto, it's a long ways from Purdue. It's about a 10 hour drive. It's important to me for him to know that there's somebody always there that's just, you know, rooting for him, no matter what. It's great to have my mom come down here. She rents an Airbnb every year, watches all my games. We come over to a place all the time, like as a team. She'll cook us a meal, we'll eat some food, we'll play some cards. You made me laugh. You made me laugh. When I just looked over and you were actually like in Man, tears, bro. <laughs> Yeah, well, sticky fingers over here. The team loves that she's here almost as much as I do. They're always excited whenever I tell her that she's in town, she's ready to make a meal. They're always like, they're always on board. They'll never say no. It's worth the 10 hour trip. Although when I go to the grocery store, I'm sure they're wondering how one woman's eating all this food, but you know, I don't, I don't have to tell them. I get to know the guys in a different way and I just keep them out of the kitchen because otherwise they make a mess. The other moms on the team are just so happy. They say, oh, you know, thanks for having my kids over. And I think, are you kidding me? It is absolutely my pleasure. It's my privilege that I can have these guys over and that they're willing to hang out with me.